Hi everybody, this is Bruce Dances for the Three Arrows Film Committee. I'll be introducing Alfred Hitchcock's Foreign Correspondent from 1940, our first film in our 2020 season. This is the first time we've been presenting movies and introductions and discussions online. It's an experiment for us, so bear with us, including the use of non-professional equipment to do this introduction. Uh, Farm Correspondent came out at an interesting time for Hitchcock and for world cinema. Uh, Hitchcock had established himself during the 1930s as certainly the preeminent film director in Great Britain, making such films as The Man Who Knew Too Much, uh, The Lady Vanishes, and The 39 Steps, which we showed at Three Arrows uh, uh, recently. Uh, he was widely sought after in Hollywood, and he signed a lucrative contract with the independent producer David O. Selznick, who was the man behind Gone with the Wind. Uh, Selznick brought Hitchcock to Hollywood uh, in late 1939, early 1940, and the first picture he made was Rebecca, and it ended up winning the Academy Award for Best Picture. For his second film, also made a little bit later in 1940, uh, Selznick loaned Hitchcock out to the independent producer Walter Wanger, who was known as a progressive. Uh, Wanger wanted to make a movie that later became known as Foreign Correspondent. And if I may backtrack a little bit, uh, the film has an interesting history. Uh, it was based originally on a book by um, Vincent Sheehan, who was a foreign correspondent for the old New York Herald Tribune, and it was based on his experiences in Europe. Uh, they had Henry Fonda lined up uh, as, to be the star, and the script was written by John Howard Lawson, who some of you may know that name. He was the leading, one of the leading communists in Hollywood. Uh, he was later a member of the Hollywood Ten. Anyway, Lawson produced a script that was very anti-fascist, talked about anti-Semitism in Germany, and was a strong progressive script. Uh, but when uh, Wanger brought it to the Hollywood uh, censors, they, they had to look at all films, they were aghast at what they saw. Uh, they did not like making movies, especially in 1936, that were overtly anti-Germany, because Germany was still, at that point, one of the leading markets for Hollywood films. Um, furthermore, uh, the Germans had set up uh, their own liaisons in Hollywood to lobby against making any films that talked about anti-Semitism or any of the outrages that the Nazis were perpetrating, perpetrating in Germany. And they called for many changes in the script, and Wanger decided he couldn't continue. Uh, cut to 1938, and the script is back, now with Hitchcock attached to it. It ended up going through as many as 15 different writers during the process to come together. But now the story is very different, and the time is very different. When they started making uh, Foreign Correspondent in, in 1940, the German army had already conquered Holland and the Low Countries and France, and the Battle of Britain uh, was, w was being waged at that point, when Germany was bombing uh, throughout uh, Great Britain and the United Kingdom, and the RAF was fighting back. Hitchcock had received some criticism in his native country for coming to the United States and being away from where the war was. And in some ways, you can see Foreign Correspondent as his plea for America to consider entering in the war. Remember, this came out about a year and a half before Pearl Harbor um, which, uh, in December 1941. Hitchcock would later go on to make a series of documentaries to help the British war effort. Anyway, uh, under Hitchcock's leadership, the script was now about a reporter played by Joel McRae, uh, who is a crime reporter in New York, but his publisher wants him to go to Europe because he feels he needs a real digger, a real hard-nosed newsman to ferret out what was going on in the days just before the, uh, the dawn of World War II. Uh, McRae was not the first choice for the part. Uh, Hitchcock reportedly wanted Gary Cooper, but Gary Cooper turned it down. And in McRae, in McRae he got a guy who was uh, affable, uh, good-looking, pretty, pretty good in both um, action films and in romantic comedies. He had been around since the 20s when he began as a stuntman, was well known for making westerns in the 30s, such as Union Pacific, sort of found his niche in making romantic comedies in the late 30s and early 40s, including uh, uh, for Preston Sturgis, The Palm Beach Story and Sullivan's Travels, uh, for George Stevens, The More the Merrier, a film we saw with Three Arrows, uh, and, and, and is well known for this film as well. Later on in the 50s and 60s and even into the 70s, he returned to making westerns, most notably uh, uh, Ride the High Country with Sam Peckinpah from the early 60s. Uh, McRae often joked that he got the parts that were uh, turned down by Gary Cooper and Henry Fonda and Cary Grant and uh, J. 
James Stewart. But I think, uh, at least what my opinion is, it, it, outside of a couple of lapses, he's pretty strong in this role. Uh, the, the leading female character is played by Lorraine Day. She is, plays the daughter of one of the leaders of a, of a peace organization that is uh, trying to uh, uh, work to avert a war in Europe, a full world war in Europe. Uh, Lorraine Day at that point was only 19 years old, but she was already uh, known for making a series of movies in the, doc well, the Dr. Kildare movies, where it was starring Lou Air. She played a nurse and uh, the doctor's love interest. Uh, later on, she became probably best known for her marriage to Leo DeRocha, a marriage that lasted around 13 years. Uh, DeRocha was the uh, former baseball manager of the, both the Brooklyn Dodgers and the New York Giants and was known as Leo the Lip. Uh, now, Lorraine Day continued her acting career mostly in TV throughout the 50s and 60s. Uh, a couple of important uh, supporting roles were played by um, uh, veteran British actors Herbert Marshall and George Sanders. Uh, Marshall had been a, a, a leading man in Hollywood since the early 30s. Um, you may remember him from Ernst Lubitsch's um, Trouble in Paradise. He usually plays very urbane characters, as does George Sanders, uh, perhaps best known for All About Eve. He often played uh, upper-class Brits. He also was the first uh, Simon Templar in The Saints, in The Saint, and then later played The Falcon. Had a long movie career. Uh, two other characters worth mentioning. Um, Albert Basserman has an important role here as an, a diplomat in Europe. Uh, he actually received an Oscar nomination for Best Supporting Actor. Uh, Basserman had been a well-known German stage and film actor who fled Germany with, along with his Jewish wife to Hollywood uh, and uh, made it, has a very poignant performance, I think, uh, in this production. Finally, uh, the humorous Robert Benchley has a small but, but intriguing role as a somewhat... Um, uh, heavy drinking or formerly heavy, formerly heavy drinking foreign correspondent. And Benchley, who was known as a, well known as a satirist and uh, wrote for the New Yorker, among other publications, uh, wrote his own dialogue uh, for this film. Unlike certain people, I can uh, drink water with only, holding a glass with only one hand. Anyway, the production came out during 1940. As I said, while the Battle of Britain was raging, uh, Hitchcock is certainly trying to make a point here, which we can discuss uh, uh, on Zoom later on. Uh, the film was, uh, uh, it's not considered one of Hitchcock's best work, but I think it's, it, I think it's underrated. It has some of his trademark uh, suspense, some amazing technical effects, and his usual mixture of humor and danger. Uh, I think it's a, a, a strong film in Hitchcock's canon, if not as good as Notorious or North by Northwest or The 39 Steps. It's still a very amiable uh, thriller. It actually received an Oscar nomination, losing out to his, uh, Hitchcock's own Rebecca for Best Picture for that year. Uh, and it was, a very, it was a crowd pleaser as well. Um, whether it influenced subsequent American policy uh, remains to be uh, is is debatable, but uh, it takes a very strong position about what was then the coming war. Um, I think you'll enjoy it. Uh, it has a couple of lapses uh, in the romantic part of it, which I think we can overlook uh, because everything else about it is so strong. Anyway, we'll see you on Zoom on July 2nd at 8 p.m. to discuss this. Meanwhile, enjoy Foreign Correspondent.